Three, two, one, and we are live. What's up, CP family? Chad here with Andrew. Tiebreaker series, 115. Glad you guys could join us. Uh, we're gonna get right into it on this episode. We got a good episode for you planned out here. And most of you are on this call because you're trying to get better. You know, you're trying to get better at tennis, simply put. That's why, I mean, that's like, especially if you're interacting with complete performance, you're, you're really trying to take your game to the next level. That's why a lot of you are coming into our kind of radius and, and trying to get this training. Now, there can be some, there, there can be a, a disconnect. When someone's trying to get better, that constantly means they're not good where they're at right now. And this kind of disconnect, however you want to call it, this kind of opposing forces, isn't very great for performance, like performing now in the moment, which is what you need to do to get better. So do you see the dilemma there? Like people are trying to get better, and that means that they're not where they're, they're not good where they're at now, and that can have a hinder on performance. Now this can seem like uh, uh, an interesting or a weird kind of way to look at it, but it makes perfect sense. And I was thinking about it today when we were doing, um, we, we, we had our, our, our company meeting today and we're like, uh, what should we do for the tiebreaker? We got so much going on. Like we are in full swing things in things here at, at complete performance, trying to, we're, we're doing so much. We're working with a lot of athletes and we're, um, making a lot of new stuff or we're creating a lot of new tools and working really hard on that. And I think someone, maybe it was me. Someone said to me like, let's just skip the tiebreaker tonight. And just skip it because we have so much going on. We have like, we're, because like as a company, we're trying to get better. We're trying to grow. We're trying to not be where we're at right now. We're trying to make a better tool to help you guys. We're trying to do all these things, right? But then it's like, no, we need to be here and now and, and do our job and, and do the tiebreaker as scheduled and all these things, right? Yeah. So for adults, we're adults and Adults watching here, parents watching here, you probably, um, you know, can can see what where I'm getting at when when it comes to like your job. Like you're trying to get better at your job, but you gotta perform right now in your job, otherwise you're never gonna get there. Okay, that opposing force, that like balance of those two things, is extremely difficult, if not impossible, for a junior athlete to handle if it's not explained or if they're not giving tools or if they're not getting equipped with how to handle this it is putting them in straight stress because of the culture good i'm not i'm not pointing fingers but everyone's responsible for creating this culture and of, of you're not where you need to be right now and i get it it seems obvious and it seems implied that like uh, obviously we're trying to get better in tennis that means we're not where we're at but the way the culture is, the way it's getting dissected and the lack of it being explained to the, the, the player, it's really hindering performances. I mean, it's just hindering performances because the athlete feels like they're not, they're always behind. That, that is not good for performance, which is what you need to do. You need to perform now if you want to hit, hit those goals and get better. So I guess just, I, I, I kind of laid it out there. I wanted to try to connect it with something real that the parents could kind of understand because I think there's a big disconnect. It's very obvious. We're not where we're supposed to be. We're trying to get better, but that hinders performance. How do you balance that? And you have firsthand experience as an athlete yourself, and this is like one of the number one things that you try to do with our CP athletes is try to equip them, equip them to actually handle um, this process. So. I don't know how you want to take this. There's a couple different entry points for you, but just talk a little bit about the balance of like, I'm not where I'm supposed to be, but like, that's okay. Okay, that's good. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Uh, let's see here. So, or take it whichever direction you yeah, want. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, I'm gonna try to approach it from a few different directions. Um, so, the first thing we want to understand is that you're only in the present moment, okay? So this idea of who you're supposed to be 
It's just that. It's just an idea of who you're supposed to be or who you want to be. It's not here right now in reality with who you actually are. Who you are right this exact moment has to take the priority always, and that just doesn't happen. You know, we went to a, we went to a tournament for the first time in a while, not that long ago, and, and the first thing, the first comment we made, we didn't even make a comment, we just looked at each other, we got out of the car, we looked at each other, and we both just started laughing, and I think you were like, man, we could, we could cut the air, that's how thick the anxiety is. <laughs> it was not even, not even a big tournament or anything like that, it's just, it's in the air, it's so thick, this, this anxiousness, this anxious energy around performing. And so if you're, if you're trying to figure out where that's coming from is when you're in that state of fear, it's because you need something in the future. So if I need something in the future and, and getting that outcome is uncertain because it's in the future, that's going to produce anxiety. If I don't, if I'm okay with who I am right now, no anxiety. So you know, I was just talking to, I was just talking to one of our athletes and we actually, uh, he helped me, he kind of started this, uh, uh, Philippe, he kind of started this, um, this, this, this concept, this model, and we kind of built it together. We were talking about this dynamic. And so before I get into that, I kind of just want to, I want to mention one thing that we were actually just talking about this earlier is, um, you're allowed to be okay with who you are right now and have a big desire to be better. You're allowed to do that. A lot of times we get caught in black and white thinking and we think this or that, they, they can't exist simultaneously. That's, that's a byproduct of being destination oriented. If I'm, if I'm outcome oriented, if I need that destination, if part of my identity is wrapped up in the attainment of that, of that outcome or that result, that's where that, it's gonna create this black or white thinking. I'm either a success or I'm a failure. So that's where this black and white thinking starts to evolve and you can't, your, your mind can't handle uh, what's called cognitive dissonance, where there's, where there's opposing beliefs, there's opposing perceptions within you, opposing perspectives. We need to be able to handle that and understand that it's okay that I'm the person I am right now, and it's also okay that I wanna be better. I'm allowed to do both of those things. I'm actually allowed to do that. So we were talking about this, this concept of trajectory, where it's like, you don't necessarily wanna think about your pathway as a pathway because then you start to try to control it and you start to see, was that result in line with my goal? Was that result in line with my goal? And you don't want to do that. You just want to have this trajectory because that's a more accurate way of seeing it where it's like, where you're at right now with your belief system and your current perspectives, you're pointed at a, cert at a certain destination, um, a certain possibility that you can become. That's what your trajectory is pointed at. But there's something else where it's like, how do you feel about yourself right now? And a lot of times it's like, those can be seen as two separate things. But what's interesting is what, and what that, that, that athlete actually came up with this himself was that these are actually a single thing. That when, if I feel, let's just say, let's just put a number in. If I feel 50% of myself, my trajectory is pointed at a certain possibility, meaning that's, that's the pathway that I'm going to go if I continue feeling this way about myself. And so with my current belief systems, it's pointed at a certain possibility. I can hit a certain UTR. I can get to a certain level of performance, which is going to get me a certain level of um, scholarships or, or, or something like that. The better I feel about myself right now, the, that changes the trajectory of where I'm, where I'm going. So everyone gets lost in trying to go somewhere, in trying to get to the place they're trying to go to. And they don't realize, no, you don't understand, you can't do that. You can't make yourself get somewhere. You can't make yourself improve. This fallacy of self-improvement where it's like, I, me, can make myself better, it doesn't quite work that way. How you feel about yourself right now is going to determine how you interact with the circumstances in the present moment that determines the results you get, that determines the performance level. So if, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm outcome oriented, meaning I'm, 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 I'm finding validation in that outcome, meaning I've given that outcome permission to tell me how good I am, which is, this is about 100% of junior athletes. We're, we're all stuck in this to an extent, we're all stuck on these outcomes that we're using as validation to, to, to validate our efforts. 
as soon as we do this, another way to, another way to see what this is, I'm here and I want to be here, what is that? That's stress. That's stress. Guys, the science is overwhelming. If you're in a state of stress, you are cognitively, cognitively impaired. It's just that simple. You play terrible. If you're stressed at work, you're going to be working bad. And a junior athlete especially, a 12-year-old, a 13-year-old, a 14-year-old, a 15-year-old, a 16-year-old, a 17-year-old, an 18-year-old, they play terrible when they're stressed. And they're all stressed because they're not where they want to be. Mm -hmm. But that's, see, but that's, that's the fallacy. So think, a lot of times we think of, I'm here, and okay, even if I take away the destination, even if I'm not trying to get somewhere where I'm not, I still have this idea of who I could be. You know, let's just call that me at my highest possibility. So it's like, I'm here in the present moment, and then me at my highest possibility, like one day I'll reach that. That's still a flawed way of seeing it. Both of those things exist right here. What's actually a more accurate way to see it is you are already your highest possibility because you're already limitless, but you're, you're within a process and you're not, you can't just jump to the end of that process. You can't just become Roger Federer immediately just because you have a limitless potential right now. A limitless potential means there is no limit on how I can be right now. So when people are like, I just don't get it. I'm, I, I can't, I can't be composed on the court. I get nervous. Well, this is what I like to say. If I gave you $1 million, to be composed on a tennis court. Could you do it? That means don't get upset when you hit it out. That means don't talk, yeah. Could you do it? Absolutely. Everyone could do it. But this is why people don't do it. We're so caught up in that the outcome determines success and failure and not my state of being, not how I'm conducting myself, not how I'm operating. When in reality, that's where the growth is coming from. Let's just take, in a, in, over the course of a match, let's just say you have 100 moments, okay? The outcome of that match tells you zero things about yourself. It's really important to understand that. The outcome of the match tells you zero things. There's nothing that you can conclude by looking at the outcome. So where, where, where is the growth happening? It's not happening as soon as the match is over or if the ball went in and out. If the, if the ball went out, I didn't grow. The ball went in, I grew. No, that didn't, it doesn't work like that. It's how present, how fully involved are you in the present moment, which is always the present moment. So let's just say if there's 100 moments in the match, let's just make it simple. If you're only there for 50 of them because the other 50 are hung up on the last point, you, you, look how much improvement, look how much growth, look how much is there that you're missing out on. And if you think about it, the reason why we're not present, there's only one reason why we're not present. And if, and if, we're, if we're being honest, we're only present maybe five to 10% of the time. We're not, it, it's, being present is this, is this ongoing, so I say success is this ongoing choice. It's this ongoing choice you have to make. That's what success is, because success is, by definition, being present. If you're present, you're in the driver's seat of your car, you're making decisions. If you're not present, there's an unconscious program driving all your behaviors. So your, past, your future's gonna look very much like your past, which you don't want to. You want to grow, you want to improve. So the, what's pulling us out of the present moment on a fundamental level is attachment to the outcome. Attachment to the outcome, it, cre it creates, um, I mean, just think about it. If I need that outcome to validate myself, I, my effort is moving out of the present moment. I'm trying to get there. You ever get down on your kid for, for being impatient? For, or or for, for just dinking the ball over and just playing not to lose, those are two sides of that spectrum of, of, not, of, of caring about the outcome. I'm either trying to close out the point quick because I think that's going to get me the outcome, or I'm not going to hit it out thinking that's going to get me the outcome. Everything is revolving around the outcome. And so even when we are present, even when we're actually there, we're not fully involved in what we're doing. It's this, this, this over-attachment to this outcome and this... this Finding your validation, finding your sense of self in an outcome. This is just a recipe for disaster, guys. We need to take a step back and realize we made a fundamental flaw really, really quickly. We took a game and we made it serious. I don't know, I don't know what else to tell you. It's, it's over. You're not going to play the game very well because you're taking it seriously. So, and the, the more, it's, it's almost like, it, it's tough, I understand, because it's a large investment, money, you know, time, energy. 
And what seems to happen is the more investment we put in it, the more attached we are to the result. And so it's just that attachment to the result is it's compromising the process. It's making, it's saying that this process is only valuable to get that outcome. So I'm not, I'm restricting to a great extent the amount of growth um, that I can get from that. Not to mention enjoying enjoying the process and actually, you know, being there and living your life and, and being involved with what you're doing. So. Yeah, that's huge. I, I mean, this 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 playful attitude. It sounds cliche when 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 people say like, just, just go out there and have fun. Like that doesn't really jive that well with high performance like communities and stuff like that. But when 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 we say play, we're talking about being completely immersed with what you're doing, fully engaged, but you're you're carrying it a little light lighter than like real life. You're 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 carrying it lighter, you're not quite taking it like it's not crushing you. The environment's not just really like destroying your emotions and stuff. That's what we're talking about playing and that's the kind of approach that you want to have with the game is to be playful. Be fully involved, fully intense and engaged, but not attached to the result. Here's a great way to, to realize that. There's times where the ball is no longer in play, but there's still an opportunity to hit it, whatever that situation is. Almost always, that person hits a winner. That person will hit an unreturnable winner. And everyone always says, oh, I wish I could just do that when it's the actual point. I said, what was different? The only difference, you were not attached to the outcome. This is, this is how important this is. You hear us talk all the time, outcome oriented, don't be outcome oriented, don't be destination oriented, don't put your identity in the outcome, don't find validation in the outcome. Why? Because you can get, you can perform like that, where you're just, you're, because think about it, they're in this performance state, you're in a match, so you're highly engaged, more so than you'd be probably in practice, even though you should be just as engaged. But you're in this engaged state, but the point's over, so like there's not even a thought of an outcome, and you just rip the ball every single time. You can like almost hit the line like four out of five times. I don't know why more people aren't, aren't stopping and saying, wait a second, I hit the line four out of five times when the ball is, when, it's, when the point's over? Like you do realize you can do that in the actual point. The only thing that's stopping you from doing that consistently, from playing at this place we'll, we'll call your potential that's well above your average performance level is detach, disattach from the result. Disidentify from it. Stop finding, you know, I, I use the word disidentify a lot, but it's, you're not finding validation in it. Because this is what happens. This is where it really only just stems down to this single thing. I'm allowing the outcome to tell me how good I am. So you're giving something externally that you're not completely in control of because there's another individual playing the match with you. And someone has to lose the point. You're giving that outcome or that UTR or that outcome of that match, you're giving that external thing permission to tell you how good you are. You're asking, this is a recipe for disaster. Just think about how many points you how many matches you lose. Probably gonna be somewhere around 50-50, 40-60. You're going to have to cope with so much perceptive failure. If I'm finding my identity and outcomes and I'm losing it, I'm probably going to lose. If I'm a really good player, I'm losing 30% of the time. I have to legitimately, meaning psychologically, I'm dealing with, with failure 30% of the time. You don't have to do that. You don't have to, you can redefine what success is and realize that the outcome is not success fail. That's not telling you how good you are and, and how not good you are. That is a rule of a game. It has nothing to do with you and your capability. But as long as we're doing that, what's going to happen is all of those outcomes that we define ourselves by, they all exist in one place, the past. So we look at the past, and we measure up our outcomes based upon the person that we think we're supposed to be, and we fall short of it a lot. That gap is insecurity. I take that insecurity, I project it into, these, into the future, and I go, oh, I'm not good in this situation, second serves and seated players and people that are younger than me. And all of a sudden, I'm projecting problems that don't exist. The only reason that problem exists is because I'm defining my current self by the past. 
not just the past, outcomes in the past, these arbitrary results that do not tell me how good I am. And so that's the process we project it. And then if you're treating the situation as a problem, perspective is reality, you're going to be very forceful with everything you do. And how do you play when you're, when you're playing forcefully? You don't play good. That's all that's happening. We look at the past, we define ourselves by past results, we project it into the future, our insecurities getting projected into the future, we see all these problems and we get all anxious and we try to control the situation, we end up playing like garbage because nobody plays good when they're forcing it. And then those poor performances, it goes, oh, I guess I was right. I guess I wasn't as good as I thought I was. I guess I really do need to get better and it's increasing this gap between who I want to be and who I am. When in reality, you're already infinite. You already, at any given moment, you can do anything. You can literally make any decision that you want. There's no limit to how you can be in any given moment. So that's a better definition of who you are. And then your expression is something that's a part of an evolution. So how you express that is going to evolve and you're going to improve and that thing is going to grow. But that's not even you. That's just how, how you're expressing yourself and what part of the process of tennis that you're in. And so it's better to stop seeing your infinite possibility as something that's in the future. You are, you already have that. That's actually a better representation of who you are. And so you can begin to start seeing yourself, see yourself as the potential, I mean, as your potential. Think about it. In this present moment, is this present moment like any other moment in the past? Okay, so how could I even remotely guess what's going to happen? You can't, can't even remotely guess. So how should I feel about myself? Why not feel my high, feel about myself my highest potential. That's how I, that's, I'm going to, that's, that's the expect, or I'm just not going to have an expectation. I'm going to see how my potential, which is this energy waiting to express itself, that's what potential is, and see what happens rather than projecting onto the present moment, laying a known on top of the infinite unknown of this present moment, like literally anything can happen. Every single moment is new and we just keep projecting the past onto the future or onto the present. And, the, and that's why people plateau. That's why we just get stuck in these cycles and we just keep repeating the, the same patterns over and over and over again. When you define yourself by the past, you're creating the problem that you're then trying to solve. So that problem doesn't exist. You can't solve a problem that doesn't exist. You're going to chase your own tail. That's what a vicious cycle is. And so this is the trap we're all starting in. But just to make it simple, where this trap starts is with us. We gave permission to the result to tell us how good we are. We gave something external. We gave our identity. That's our identity. I'm allowing that to tell me who I am. That result. This is what the highest level players do. You think Roger Federer double faults or misses a point and thinks worse about himself? No, he doesn't give the result permission to tell him who he is. This is what the highest level athletes learn how to do. You have to be able to disidentify with it because only when you can... Only when you do that can you actually be fully present, and only when you're fully present can you give your best performance. And considering that nobody's really disidentified with the results to, um, I mean, it, like <laughs> the vast majority of people haven't done that yet. So you don't even know how good you are. You don't, you haven't even seen it one time. And we're making all of these judgments and assumptions about ourselves, about our future and our track. And if I don't hit this UTR by this age and two or three years down the line, and we're pulling our hair out. And it's like, if you're, you are who you are right now. The best possible chance to get the best possible performance is be that person. The best possible chance. If you are this person and you're, tr you're attempting to be better than you are, that's going to lead to a worse performance. So the, I guess the action item of this is stop trying to be different than you are. And it, we're, we're buying in just like it, it's impressed upon us with the, with, with, with the entire athletic industry yeah. that you, you, you should want to be better than you are. No, that's the biggest lie ever. It's creating stress. It's creating internal conflict. I need to be this, but I'm that. How do you think that person's self-image is going to be? Less than ideal. We have to realize that the person, you're, to, to, to quote one of our mentors, you know, it's not about becoming superhuman. It's about realizing that being human is super. You already have it. You already have that limitless ability to be however you want. And if we just realize, stop getting hung up on the last point, stop projecting 
past experience into, the, into this unknown of the present moment where anything can happen. Stop doing it. And that's the answer. That's where, that's the, those are the things that are actually going to increase your performance level, and then the results are going to follow suit, obviously. So realize that you're in control of your state of being. Be how you want to be. Figure out how you want to be, and be that. And stop letting the result tell you if you're failing or not. The result can't do that. Only you can tell you if you're failing. So stop lying to yourself and saying the result's telling you that you're failing. Stop giving the result permission to do that and realize that you're in control of your state of being and you can be composed. Are you going to be good at it at first? Probably not. But that's pretty normal, right? If, if you've never done something before, you're probably not going to be really good at it at first. Yeah, okay. So, so don't get upset when, when you're trying to be composed and you can't. You get a little too anxious and the nerves overcome you. It's okay. Back at it next time. Yeah. It's not this overcompensating, I need to be better than I am. Relax into the person that you are now. If you're constantly trying to be better than you are, all of your energy is moving out of the present moment. Yeah. Settle into the person you are right now. You don't realize how capable you are. Settle into that person and give that person a chance to actually show what they're capable of. That person never, your potential never shows up to match that. There's no space for it. You're too busy trying to be better than you are that your potential can't flow through you. We talk about flow all the time. It's going to flow through you. Do you know how you do that? Stop. Stop trying. Allow it. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> we'll end on that. You know, this is, bit, this is, this is a good one. You, should, you, should, you guys should probably rewatch this one a couple times. The key takeaway is to disidentify from results. This is much easier said than done. Uh, there's a lot of layers to it. Um, we're going to be providing content and tools that help you do it. You said one thing really important um, where you have to redefine what success really is. That's something that we can probably dive into next tiebreaker because that's a whole other topic because it's like, all right, if I'm not, if I don't, if I'm not laser like focused on results like I used to be, how do we, how, what, what success then? So we can get into that. How do you redefine success? to kind of help with these perspective shifts so that this can all just happen. What we're describing, this is the natural state of, this is like, what, what everyone's doing right now is unnatural. What everyone's doing right now is very forceful and that's why you don't see these very, these potent performances at potential. We'll give you the tools, the, the tips to equip the athletes, equip the parents on how to actually bring this about and get these awesome performances. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next one. Peace. Love you guys.